So in the previous video we have learned about the text animation. In this video we will learn about the repeater and trim path option of After Effects. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So here we are in Adobe After Effects, I'll create a new composition as always and I'll call this composition as main animation width I'll choose 1920 and height is 180 frame rate is 30 seconds duration is also 30 seconds and background color is white color and I'll simply hit ok then I'll go to the choose grid and guide option and hit titles F actions so we can get this grid. Now first we will see what is trim path so I'm gonna create one stroke with the help of our pen tool and as the shape layer whenever we are going to choose pen tool we will get these two options over here fill and stroke but I want to create stroke so I don't require any fill over here so I'll click on this fill and I'll simply delete it I'll hit ok now in stroke we have to choose certain amount of color so I'll select this red or something like purple and then I'll hit ok then by holding shift I'll create one point over here and one point over here or let's say without shift I'll click from one point to here and from this end I can increase the stroke width like that and for the resolution if you want then you can choose full but I'm gonna choose the quarter one so it will help full to animate now I'll go to the contents then I'll go to the add menu and over here you will find this option called trim path then I'll simply click on it I'll go over the trim path we will get three options over here one is start one is end and one is offset so now we will see what are these so first thing we need to understand that whenever we are going to create any stroke with the help of pen tool it's a shape layer so as you can see my shape layer is from this end to this end and trim path is helpful to manipulate the stroke which is inside the shape layer for example suppose i am you uh, going to increase the value of start so if you see properly the end of my shape layer is still here it's just helpful to animate this stroke not the whole shape layer so as you can see i can manipulate the start value and i can manipulate the end value of both of them so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna decrease the end value first i'll create one keyframe over here I'll hit Ctrl D to duplicate it so, to, so we can see some another options and I'll hide it. I'll select this one and I'll go to around 1.5 seconds and I'll make it contract just like that. So if I hit play as you can see we'll get this kind of animation. And now after a certain point at this point I'll create one keyframe on the start and I'll create another keyframe uh, over here and this start I'll make it 100 over here. So as you can see first this animation is running and then this one so i'll get this kind of animation if i select both of them and then i'll hit f9 so as you can see we will get this kind of smoothness over here like that now this is the start and end property now we will focus on what is offset so for that i'll hide this one and i'll enable this one i'll go over here to the contents and then trim path and now what is the use of this as let's say my end value is 55 and start value is suppose something like that now i want this if i want the continuous looping animation i'll delete this keyframe first now with the help of offset i can move this thing on this entire shape layer which is from here to here and with the help of trim path we can manipulate this stroke so if I change the value of my offset as you can see we'll get this kind of stuff so offset is useful for that with the help of we can use I mean create looping animation for suppose at the zero frame I'm gonna create one keyframe over here and at four seconds suppose I'll make it one complete rotation and I'll hit N over here to trim my composition now if I hit play as you can see we will get this kind of looping animation now to go a little bit further what i'll do i'll select this layer and i'll delete this for now 
I'll select the shape layer and then I'll go to the shape layer I'll go to the stroke one and in over here I'll get all the stroke options like color opacity stroke width you can adjust it from here also now over here we will get this option which is called line cap and butt cap instead of that I'll choose round cap so as you can see the corners are round now so if I see this animation now we will get something like this I'll hit to you to reveal my keyframes I'll select all the keyframes I'll go to the graph editor and then I'll select those keyframes and with the help of shift I'll move this handles like that so you'll get this kind of animations now I'll go in the middle of them I'll select this layer I'll hit ctrl D to duplicate it I'll choose my selection tool and I'll increase the stroke width for this one and I'll change the color of this one to blue and I'll move this thing over here again I'll hit ctrl D select this layer hit ctrl D I'll move this thing over here and let's change the color like that decrease the stroke width like that select this middle one hit ctrl D drag it at the top I'll move this thing over here I'll change the color hit ctrl D move this thing over here I'll change the color like that now zoom in a little bit and we can move these things like that and now suppose if I hit play I'll get this kind of animation now I'll hit ctrl A to select all of them I'll hit ctrl D and I'll drag it at the top and I'll move them a little bit forward all of them so as you can see we are getting something like that now I'll choose my text tool and I'll type motion over here which is my text I'll select this text I'll press ctrl alt home to align the anchor point to the center then I'll go to the align tab align it horizontally and then align it vertically I'll press S on my keyboard to increase the scale and I'll move this thing over here at this point I want this to be appear so I'll move this thing over here and I'll simply drag it down so now if I see my animation I'll get something like this so as you can see this is a very basic animation you can do with the trim part now this is our trim part section now we will focus on our repeaters so i'll hit ctrl n on my keyboard to create a new composition and i'll create a new composition with called repeater i'll type rep only just like that then again i'm gonna select the stroke and i'll create one stroke from here to here and i'll decrease the font width i'll press ctrl alt home to align the anchor point to the center now then again i'll go to the contents and add menu and i'll choose this repeater so whenever we are going to choose repeater as you can see we'll get something like that if i go to the repeater it will have two options one is copies and one is offset offset is also like this offset which we have in trim path now with the help of copies obviously you can increase the number of copies suppose i am going to choose eight like that and in transform repeater you will get another options as you can see the position on x, uh, x, x axis is 100 I'll make it 0 and on y axis suppose I'll increase the value as you can see we'll get this something like that if you increase the number of copies as you can see we'll get this kind of options over here now then again we have something like scale we have something like rotation and start opacity and end opacity now with the help of this option we'll get create one simple animation I'll delete this for now I'll choose my ellipse tool I don't want any stroke for now and what I'll do I'll create one ellipse with the help of my ellipse tool I'll press something like that 
I'll press Ctrl Alt Home to align the anchor point to the center. Then I'll go to the Align tab, align it horizontally, and then align it vertically. Then we will add our repeater. Go to the repeater one, and over here I am gonna increase the copies up to let's say 300. And then I'll go to the transform repeater. And then I uh, position on x axis i will type 0 and y axis also 0 now over here you can adjust the anchor points of that but before that what we will do as you can see my copies are 300 so in rotation what i'll do over here i'll type 360 divided by so i'll do slash and i'll type 300 like that and if i in if I change the position as you can see we'll get something like that over here I'm gonna decrease the or increase the scale and I can simply move the anchor point also and let's say I'm gonna decrease the scale to 99 also you can change the position of it and you can change the position of this anchor point like that let's make the position zero and as you can see if you change the position of anchor point you will get something like that let's make this one zero one or one zero zero point five which is our scaling option you want more than that hundred point two, let's say hundred point three. Now I'll go to the ellipse path one, I'll go to the size and I'll decrease the size. So as you can see, we'll get something like that. I'll select the shape layer. I'll press S for scaling option and I'll scale it down like this. So as you can see, with the help of this repeater, you can manipulate the repeaters and their transform properties like scale, rotation, etc, etc. And over here, you can with the help of these copies, you can animate this thing also like that. And if I change the rotation like that so as you can see what we will get and I can in decrease the scale according to the like that now suppose if I choose this as 97.3 and with the help of this anchor points I can manipulate them also like that I move this thing over here I'll create one keyframe on anchor point and one keyframe on copies. Hit U so we can see both of them. And I'll go to around one second. Again, I'll create another keyframes at the start. I'll make this zero. Now, if we hit play, we'll get something like this. I'll move this thing from there to there. Like that. Now I'll delete this anchor point over here. I'll hit Ctrl D. I'll hit U. Select those anchor points, keyframes. Go over here, and I'll move this over here. Now select this, and you can shift the anchor point like that, and you can change the colors. Like that. So you'll get something like this. Now I'll select both of them. I'll press Ctrl Shift C and I'll call it the circle. I'll select both of them. I'll hit Ctrl D. I'll press R. And if I rotate it, let's say minus 20. Again, I'll hit Ctrl D. I'll press R. I'll rotate it on minus 40. Hit Ctrl D, R, 
let's make it minus 860 let's see how it looks it will look like that I'll hit ctrl D R let's make it minus 80 hit ctrl D R let's make it minus 100 now I'll select all of them I'll hit ctrl D I'll drag it at the top I'll press R for all of them and I'll manually rotate it from here until unless I'm getting something like this I'll hit ctrl D again I'll drag them at the top I'll press R on my keyboard and I'll rotate them unless until we'll get something like this so if we hit play now we'll get something like that now there is another tip I am gonna show you what we can do I'll hit page down button two times I'll select all of them alt close bracket which is a square bracket right click go to the keyframe assistance go to the sequence layers and simply hit ok zoom out and move this composition from here to here so if we hit play now as you can see with the help of this repeater we can manipulate our shapes and animate it like that so in this video we have learned about the trim path and how with the help of trim path you can create some simple animations and we have also learned about the thing which we also call a repeater and with the simple use of this repeater we can create so many uh, different different animation in our next videos we will use both of them like trim path and repeater to create a different different animations but to make you understand what is the concept of them i have created this tutorial so make sure to hit the like button and subscribe button and we will see you in the next video